We've waited all spring and all summer for this, the first weekend of college football, and that wait is nothing compared to what Brock Mueller has gone through with his friends inside the Michigan football program. This painful, long, tough journey started on Christmas Eve 2007. At a rural Fulton County intersection, a 90-year-old driver missed the stop sign, and life hasn't been the same since for Brock or his brother, Wolverine offensive lineman Elliot Miller. A memorial now rests near the road, honoring their father, David, who died in the crash, as well as Elliot's high school sweetheart, Hollis Reeker. For me, being on this football team, that's something that's really helped me, uh, helped me move on. You know, my brother's out here, and that's what's really been, uh, been able to help me get through it. Moments after the accident, Elliot tried to free his brother by lifting the car. Elliot unsuccessfully tore his rotator cuff. Brock's spinal cord in the shape of an S with two shattered vertebrae left with almost no hope to walk. They always just wanted me to uh, accept that fact instead of... Uh, being in denial and thinking that I was going to walk again. Unbelievably, just two and a half years later, Brock is up on his feet, replaying that conversation over and over again. She said, um, at this point, we can tell you that um, you'll most likely never walk again. I saw her like in March, and she you know, told me, well, I guess, um, you know, you're part of the 1% that, that make a recovery, you know. And she was, uh, she was actually, she was, um, you know, pleasantly surprised, I guess, but she was really shocked, you know, at, uh, um, at what I was doing. He's made it this far with a big push from the strength and conditioning staff at Michigan. Up! Breathe out. Get it. There you go. Last one. Last one. Let's go. For almost a year now, Brock has worked out with the same coaches in the same weight room as the Wolverines. You see him working in the weight room every day, four days a week, sometimes five days a week. You see him in the weight room working, and he embraces the pain in his legs. You know, his muscles are responding. So you look over at that, and you feel like your body's hurting a little bit. You see him working, you're like, I don't, I'm not really hurting as bad as I thought I would. I think what he's done... Um, you know, it's just been amazing. He's had a lot of support from friends, family, really taking it head on and said, I'm going to do this. And it's really been by his will that he's going to do this. I related a lot to, uh, you know, practices and uh, weightlifting, things like that I did in high school and college. Um, it's, you know, it's all about focusing and, you know, pushing your body past that point where you're, after your body's telling your mind like you can't, you know, do it anymore, it's all, it's all just a matter of telling your body that you can and, you know, and keep pushing. Why? Because a short 10 minute walk is no easy task. Just look at the sweat. I have about 200 things to, you know, think about as I'm walking now, which I guess is good instead of just, you know, walking however I can, I have to, you know, think about all these techniques and specifically like trying to keep keep my knees bent that little bit on each step so they're not just straight and trying to find my center of balance and half the time the limitations are just how much my mind can think about them. 33 months ago, Brock could not convince one doctor he'd walk again. But with the help of Coach Rodriguez, he's ready to make 100,000 believers. He's dedicated his life to, to prove that he can walk again and be able to do that in front of, a, uh, for our, for, for our fans and national TV and all that's going to be quite emotional. And now the moment is here, the light at the end of the tunnel. His mother Shelley and brothers Elliot and Blake. Please welcome Brock Miller.
thinking about my dad, thinking about Hollis, and you know, just how much they're smiling down on us. I can just feel them here, and it's it's unbelievable. I just I, I thank God every day for it. One percent of people ever ever recover from spinal cord injuries, and mine was so bad they didn't think I was part of that one percent. Usually, that's the ones that they don't have as bad an injury, but. Uh, that's just what drives me, to be part of that 1% all the time, and I give all the glory to God, and, and that's the same way these coaches are. I give, give all the glory to God. By no means is this battle through. Brock will continue to push. He'll continue to give it everything he's got. He wants to walk longer, faster, and without those canes, and we certainly cannot wait to see him do it. As for that football game against UConn, uh, so much for that question mark at quarterback. Denard Robinson took almost every snap and racked up more than 100 rushing yards. That just in the first quarter. He had 197 in the game. That one put the Wolverines up 14 to nothing. Robinson also great through the air, completing 19 of 22 passes. Michigan a winner 30 to 10. Bowling Green opens up the new season down at Troy. The Young Falcons hanging with the Trojans. 17-17 tie here in the third quarter. Eugene Cooper catches the putt and goes straight up field for a 63-yard return. The program's first in four years. BG leads it 24-17, to but boy, that did not last. Troy setting up for a late game-winning field goal. That is good from 34 yards, and the Trojans win it 30-27. to High school ball tonight, Southview Rogers, the uh, Cougars defense, rock solid, same for the offense. Denard Pinckney here reaching for the goal line. That a seven-yard touchdown, Southview a winner, 21 to nothing. And uh, KB, how about Brock? That a miracle, a real, real miracle. They happen every day, but his story is going to bring so much hope for so many people. Thanks, Joe. What an amazing story.